Hello, welcome to the Studio Utani podcast. I'm Matt Jarjosa, mother, and today I am joined by Baker. And son. Uh, yeah, my son, my boy. Use that joke again. Yeah, use that joke. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't reference the fact that we've been having right, technical right. problems. And we've recorded this like this is the third time we're trying this. No, um, first take. For, yeah, 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 yeah. First take. What, what am I saying? Uh, I got to reread the script. Um, so this is something new we're trying on the channel. Uh, what's the story, mother? So um, you might have noticed I've been kind of AFK for a while. And part of it is because of um, work commitments have been increasing, um, you know, stuff in my personal life, you know, the, the typical, you know, YouTuber you know spiel that 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 you get um but uh also just because these videos take a long time to produce and you know sometimes there's even a question like like i don't know is this tid little tiny bit of news like you know is that something like that a whole video needs to be made about you know um so i've kind of been developing this idea for you know, maybe maybe a weekly or bi-weekly podcast where we just kind of sit down and talk about, you know, what's the news? What's the story, mother? And, um, you know, what's trending in sci-fi? What's trending in alien? Um, you know, just and maybe just kind of talk about some of the older films or talk about whatever. We kind of want to keep it very casual. Um, you know, for the most part, but, you know, make sure we have stuff to talk about. Um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, Baker, um, you, uh, you had some things you uh, wanted to oh, uh, say? Of course, yeah. Well, uh, since this is our first uh, podcast, I thought we could kind of set the standard a little bit, let people know where we're coming from, talk about some of our favorite sci-fi. Um, so, of course, Alien. We love Alien here, oh, Studio Yutani. We love it. Um, but there's plenty else. You know, 2001 is, of course, a classic, one of my favorites, or even Akira, some anime in there. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're super hyped. Of course, the, the David Lynch Dune is excellent, but uh, the Debatable. new Dune coming out looks pretty damn good. And I'm excited to get into that as well. Um, That's a, we're going to talk about Dune. Uh, alien versus predator <laughs> um alien versus predator requiem <laughs> you, it, like legitimately you like both of those movies no well uh ironically i don't like uh, avp i like avp ironically is it like johnny where it's like you ironically or unironic <laughs> ambiguously like uh <laughs> neil breen movies oh come on we like oh neil breen is sci-fi if you think about it, really, at least a couple of those movies, maybe not debate, all of them. Debate, but... d debatable, sir. Right. Uh, what is the one? I am here now. I I, I don't know. I I've I've seen enough Neil Breen just from the clips that I've seen. I, it's like I get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, I mean, but yeah, our um, our favorite films can you know sometimes give us a little bit more information about who we are um you know well, that was yeah i was curious what you think if you we haven't really talked about this much even though we talk a lot about movies and sci-fi and alien um what is it about the like horror sci-fi that gets you because a lot of people say alien the whole thing that's most terrifying about it is you're stuck in space there's no way out no one can hear you scream in space right but yeah. well, is it yeah. Well, what was it? Was there another part to the, to the question? Well, like, as you know, the alien itself is like this animalistic, scary monster, classic monster movie monster almost. Then you have the yeah. face hugger, which is almost like a weird parasite virus thing. And then the isolation as well. And, there, and then you and I also love eldritch horror, like Lovecraft. And yeah. that doesn't really show up too much in alien, but. I think well, that's maybe shows, my. Well, yeah. kind of kind of does. I mean, ancient spacecraft with uh with the. Oh, that's ship. true. Yeah, I mean that's that's true out, for sure. Yeah, that's straight out of Lovecraft. That's a good um, point. That, um, that one scene really in the first Alien changes well, I mean, the tone a lot. 
Well, it channels, uh, there's a lot of Lovecraft channels. There's just fear of the unknown. You know, it's inherently like alien is both uh, a noun and an adjective. Mm-hmm. You know, it describes the creature and also is the creature, which is yes. kind of eerie. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. I think the uh, the appeal of sci-fi horror is just, you know, it's it's a cool mashup. This space is scary. You know, and so it's like what kind of horrible things could be lurking out in space? Alien attempts to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Um, But I wanted to kind of get into some news. Um, So I'm going to kind of share my screen here. I was looking up uh, stories about Dune, but we're going to start with. uh, We'll get into that. We're going to start with Blade Runner. So uh, Free League, who did the Alien RPG, which was excellent, um, got their hands on Blade Runner, which it's just it's like, the, the, that's like a one-two punch. Like, that's kind of amazing. Um, I don't know how big um, Free League was before the Alien stuff. I mean, that's when I took notice of them, but this is yeah. kind, of, it's kind of a big deal um Did they do one, cthulhu yeah. or anything like that i i honestly don't know i i think the cthulhu stuff might be some uh, might be something else yeah i think but, you're right. uh, but but it's it's kind of amazing we get these two you know extraordinary um science fiction films which have you know captured people's imaginations around the world and now they're both um are going to be um a tabletop role playing and that's extraordinary uh to me it, it it's just like whelp unzips wallet yeah. um <laughs> but, uh, money. yeah yeah we got um some artwork here which is really cool and looks kind of reminiscent of some of the artwork that we see in the alien uh rpg uh, um uh core rule book um yeah it's uh it's being described as being uh kind of investigative so it's you know it's the classic noir style which is you know obviously very blade runner um Mm -hmm. you know and i like this quote here classic noir fashion it's never afraid to challenge everyday people to make extraordinary choices and sacrifices and really delve into that dark and delicious moral gray um definitely you know i love it i love the i love the vibe of it um what like do you dirty what do you, and lived in and well yeah it, well i mean is aliens dirty and living but it's like uh blade runner is just like like uh well it's also pretty dirty and lived in but it's right. it's vibrant so, but it's also there's life to it as well uh, what, what, oh, do yeah. you, what do you what do you what do you think about what do you think about this beggar i'm hyped uh i'm thinking a little cyberpunk you know been looking into that uh game recently so i'm yeah. i'm prepped i'm primed i am uh ready to get into uh you're not gonna be my... you're, you're not gonna be able to glitch your way out no. of out of uh what when i'm in charge of the scenario you know you, right yeah you can't we'll see what i can get away with but yeah you, there, you can't you can't clip through the wall sir skip to uh, the front of the line at the club and yeah yeah so many glitches in the game but blade runner i can't remember i think blade runner kind of started the cyberpunk genre if i'm not oh absolutely yeah well i mean and ghost in the shell i guess too but but Um, which came first that is a good question and i know i've talked about this before i think ghost well ghost in the shell is 1995 so yeah well ghost Ghost in the shell probably took from blade runner i Um, guess so yeah well, Ridley Scott. Well, the manga you, came first. Well, I'm sure we'll hear about it in the comments. That uh, it's, um, but yeah, it's it's a cool uh, it's a cool concept. It's a cool concept, um, and I'm I'm all for it. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people that are, and I, I confess I'm thinking this already. Like, how can I wonder if there's a way to combine the rule books of uh, the rules of. Uh, Blade Runner uh, RPG with Alien RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if they'd be compatible, but that'd be interesting. Um, yeah, like we were saying, or I was thinking about how obviously <laughs> Alien's much more 
uh, survival based and Blade Runner, at least if you're looking at something like cyberpunk. Sorry, is my dog coming through? Come here. I might have to cut this out. Okay, go. Stop. I saw a squirrel or something. No, no, we're not cutting anything. This is this <laughs> is why people keep, do it live. Pe people want to see the real want to see the real thing, man. They want uh, us. Yep. To, they want us to posture. Um, raw, raw hide. But, uh, but yeah, it's. I don't know. I I think it's high time Blade Runner's got an RPG, and um, you know it's it's pretty cool. Now I'm not really like the Alien RPG was really the first tabletop that I ever played. Um, and, yeah, that but, surprises me too because yeah. you were you seem like you had knack for DMing off the bat. I figured you had some D and D background, but well, I guess not. No, no, stop. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's um, the the thing about it is I I enjoyed it very much, and I and I and I want to do it again. I I really do. I would love to sit down and play Alien again. The problem is prepping those scenarios is just crazy. It, it takes a crazy amount of time, and there was there were times where it's like I'm not I'm not even exaggerating. We'd be playing the game, you know. I, I, you know one night and then i would go to bed and i would wake up the next morning and prep start prepping the next scenario yeah. and i did that every single day that week up until you know sunday or whatever and then we did the scenario and that's kind well, of why paid we, off. yeah it's kind it's of we, well I'm, I'm glad it paid off but that's the reason why we kind of stopped doing it because it's just like i can't keep doing this yeah um it, it, it's uh it's just way too much um but having said that i think it's fantastic i i you know i had fun with those and i would love to do it again um alien but you know i think blade runner would also be worth uh looking into as well i mean if, if cyberpunk has taught me anything you could easily do an open world rpg make your own character freestyle uh tabletop with this universe well i mean cyberpunk of... cy cyberpunk you're talking about the video game but it yeah. was cyberpunk was based on a tabletop well, rpg oh it was oh yeah. i didn't know that yeah yeah that that's where it started so cyberpunk was, was kind of like the original like i i mean it, it was of course inspired by blade runner but it was like it kind of you know molded you know a lot of the genre along with like william gibson I mean, uh, mm -hmm. these these genres you know have multiple through lines of influence so i don't know if we can just say one or the other was the defining moment but right uh, um but i i do it... i do believe cyberpunk played a kind of a crucial role in bringing a lot of the core elements of the genre out to uh out to people mm -hmm in a more consumable way because let's because to be honest a lot of people aren't into tabletop rpgs it's you know not as visually stimulating as more of a time investment you gotta get other people so it's you know it's down there on the accessibility i think what yeah. makes it work and what i like about it is there's a social component to it mm -hmm. that's yeah. necessary yeah yeah and i i think that that's actually like really healthy like mm -hmm. versus like video games which you can play a video game all by yourself which can be nice it, it can be relaxing but it can also um you know it, it can lead to some unfortunate uh kind of perspectives or um time management <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you can't but, you can't hop off D, &D all your friends hop off D, &D and you keep grinding your character and yeah, then you meet no, you, you, yeah you have to you have to keep the story going and you have to keep the players invested and and that's tough to do and it's really tough to do with something like alien because it's aliens got to be scary yeah that's why the one-off i thought worked so well too because it was like this condensed just like <laughs> shit show uh for the characters you know yeah. well that was my goal was to just try and i thought what's scary um alien xenomorphs in a cave yeah um yeah. which you know they ended up being neomorphs because i thought they looked more like a, a creature that you would see in a cave. yeah yeah uh, yeah and they're just kind of 
uh, that they have more of that. Plus, also from a lore perspective, I had to just I would have to like justify why are there xenomorphs in here, and that's sure. kind of questionable. It, it, if if one accepts the David origin story, um, you know, it it, right. it it would bring up a lot of questions. So I was just like, let's just do neomorphs. <laughs> yeah, play it safe. Yeah. That was a fun um, one, though. And you pulled a lot, uh, aesthetically at least, from The Descent, right? That movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, hell yeah. 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 That was good. I just want to mention that, too. It's not really sci fi, but it's almost Halloween. So no, I watch no. that, that movie around Halloween every year. Yeah. Oh, no, it's excellent. It's excellent. Um, but I do want to kind of keep us on point a little bit. Um, so another um, uh, thing to talk about, and I don't have any real articles pulled for it, but um, it's. Uh, um and and i guess actually this is actually coming straight off of talking about rpgs um andrew gaska um who's the lead writer on the alien rpg um won uh i believe he uh, i think he won at least one award i'm not i'm not sure if he won uh are we it, talking I, chariot of the gods no, it, well, he wrote that too. But the one okay. that he wrote was a uh, it was De uh, Destroyer of Worlds, which we okay. didn't play. We didn't do um, that one. Yeah, the Destroyer of Worlds expansion uh, won um, three awards, and I I think one of them was for writing. I'm not entirely sure, but it's a uh, it's a tremendous honor, obviously, oh, yeah. and that's um, you know that that's pretty gosh darn awesome, and uh, I. I I haven't actually broken into that scenario yet, but from you know what I've heard of it and what I have read of it, it is pretty, it's pretty rad. Pretty um, hype. Well, it's kind of like, and we're starting to see more and more of this, I think, in a lot of the, the media uh, surrounding Alien. There's a lot more of a marriage going on. Like, like before you had, like, there was almost two different brands. There was Alien, and then there was Aliens. And yeah. mm -hmm. now we're starting to see a little bit more of a, a marriage uh, where it's like there's the uh, the alien is the spookiness of alien merged with like colonial marines. And then the Prometheus stuff is kind of being mixed in there. And it, it's kind of leading us down some really super creative and super uh, interesting roads. Um, mm -hmm. Fire Team Elite, which, you know, right. I'm, yeah, I'm behind. I'm playing that as well and i you there there is a video of me and justin trying it out <laughs> on the channel which i kind of took the piss out of it um it, i don't really like shooting games all that there's much. not much of a horror aspect in that one right yeah, it's more yeah, alien i wasn't alien. scared i wasn't scared playing it i i i i didn't feel like the aliens were ever a threat and that's uh, that's unfortunate. tower defense alien well, it, it's kind of, um, it's like Left 4 Dead. Oh, right. So if yeah. you're playing okay. it like with friends, I'm sure it's it's great and it's a lot of fun, but it's... <laughs> but you were playing with Justin. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I only have one controller for, for the PS4, unfortunately. So, And also, I don't think you can just kind of sit and play. I think it has to be like over the internet. You know, so you oh. need it. Well, yeah, nowadays, yeah, you can't even split screen in Halo these days. Yeah. No more yeah. land parties. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, uh, so, so basically, it, it, again, I think it might be more fun with other people, but it's just, it wasn't, it wasn't too scary to me. But what I have heard, though, and, and this is actually something I mentioned in the video, I mentioned it's like, it doesn't really have a story. It just kind of throws you right in the middle of the action. Uh, but apparently this there is actually like a pretty elaborate story from what i've heard and they're saying that especially around the midpoint it gets super crazy and um and, I'm, and it, they start getting into like the prometheus and covenant stuff and i'm like hmm. okay i might have to i might have to you know it's not my favorite genre but i might have to sit down and uh power through this I'm a wonderful uh, a mother. Uh, this is I am quite. Maybe maybe I'll finish uh, Alien Fire Team Elite. Maybe, maybe well, not. I don't know. You also have a job to do and all sorts of stuff going on. So 
Oh, oh, I appreciate yeah. I have you here to make excuses for me. That's what I'm here for. I'm your, I'm your, I'm your golden boy son. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, my son. Go yes. forth and sin no more. Um, need an acronym for it. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, and I didn't really pull any specific article for it, but um, a uh, big movie coming up, Dune. Yes. Hell yes. And, and uh, <laughs> I'm hype for Dune. Um, yeah. Denis Villeneuve yeah. uh, can do no wrong uh, as far as nope. I'm concerned. Not that I've um, seen. Yeah, I, um, I believe fully in his uh, direction um, mm -hmm. for this. Uh, the trailer was hype, dude. I saw yeah. it late. I know it came out a while ago, but I saw it with a buddy like a couple of weeks ago. We yeah. were just fanboying out looks so good yeah i um i have I, like i never really like got super into dune but i'm obviously aware of it through like osmosis and um you know spicy memes get it get it get it <laughs> the christian um, slater oh spice yeah spice spice yeah which by the way did you know that that's actually a, a pun because because in in dune the spice is called melange oh yeah which is french for variety right the variety is the spice the of spice life. of life and I'm like, that's kind of that's cute that is it, that's good yeah uh, yeah well, um, in there. real seamless but um I, I i never really but I, I i've learned something about the lore of it um but not enough for like i'm almost kind of going in just sort of as a uh, you know someone who vaguely knows the story and mm -hmm. i'm you know i'm excited to um to see what uh denis villeneuve has come up with however um there's some serious question and and this is maybe kind of co coming from me a little bit i i don't know i i wonder if this movie is gonna actually make any money uh I think it will. I think people are hyped because, at least for me, Dune became like my Game of Thrones surrogate when Game of Thrones shit the bed. And I know that's fancy, but it is this high production, um, imaginative yeah. world, right? Yeah, it has this like A list cast and all this stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I it's it's kind of um, I'm not sure if it's high science fiction or low science fiction. It's, it's right it's, kind it's, of... it's it blend, and especially the books the song of ice and fire books do have sci-fi elements in them so yeah. and i'm used to george martin as a sci-fi writer so when when uh that was over dune kind of became this this cool uh thing for me to latch on to then the movie it been how many times did it get delayed because of the pandemic like three or four they're talking about making it a mini series all this crazy stuff um think it was supposed to come out last year so right it's and it was like and they keep pushing yeah they September keep pushing then December yeah but well the amount of money that Warner Brothers and Legendary have spent on it it, it can't lose any and it, it, it the whole like streaming thing is so new I don't know how they're um accounting necessarily like they're pro they're like they're probably going to be looking at like the numbers like as soon as it comes out on streaming like how many people tuned in how many new subscribers did we get uh and then yeah kind of do the hollywood math and factor that into its profit but it's kind of ambiguous um but in and i'm bringing the, i'm bringing up whether or not it's gonna actually make money because um blade runner 2049 was was a masterpiece mm -hmm. um but um pretty big flop like huge uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that um i think just kind of a failure to connect with uh with younger generations um also the movie's just really long so mm -hmm. less screenings um it's this big it's there's not a lot of action it's just this very big weighty philosophical um kind of uh story um probably the reason why a lot of people didn't get into the first blade runner for a long time yeah uh, 
and the first Blade Runner has so many cuts. People, I know people who are like, I don't know which one to watch, so I've yeah. just never watched it. One hundred percent. But I, I think Dune, Denis Villeneuve's Dune, probably has to um, overcome its epic length. Is but I also think it has to overcome audience interest. Honestly, yeah, because because yeah. Dune is is classic sci-fi uh, and you know as much as cool as i think it is like i think it's awesome that like game of thrones in space okay i'm in and there's mm-hmm. giant sandworms awesome mm-hmm. um and by christian slater christian, <laughs> christian slater or christian um, bale <laughs> oh yeah that's right yeah christian bale yeah christian bale plays the sandworm he gained yeah. 500,000 tons for the role um yeah, really but, impressive but, but what I'm kind of getting at here is do you do you think there's a problem with um it, it's kind of like yeah you think Star Wars is cool but Dune was the first Star Wars kind of thing oh. but, so, but nobody actually cares about that you almost you have to sell Dune on its own terms and I'm worried that a modern audience would find it kind of antiquated yeah I think it's probably going to be big with people like our age and 10 to 20 years older, if they even give a shit about going to the movies anymore and not just watching it at some point. Because, you know, our generation and younger is very like midnight release. Let's get out there, watch Endgame when it drops. But Dune, I think, will age really well, but maybe not be a big boom when it first happens. Because, like, you got to remember the old Dune kind of may have turned a lot of people off to it back in the day because you watched that one you haven't read the books you're like what the fuck is this can we swear on this podcast uh, yeah, yeah okay yeah. Well, <laughs> i didn't even think to ask yeah i mean we're this is based on an r-rated right. franchise okay. i don't know about monetization or whatever <laughs> so. um, but i i don't i don't know either <laughs> okay uh, I, I, that's, that's not my domain even though gotcha. i'm a debate <laughs> um Continue. i don't know i think it'll i think it'll it probably will bomb unfortunately it at least they're trying to appeal to younger people with like they got jason momoa in there and they got they, zendaya they, they got everybody they like, got everybody everybody's in this movie josh like the, Thanos is in this movie <laughs> yeah uh, poe from yeah. oh yeah poe dameron but Os- yeah. oscar isaac yeah. yeah so they're i think they could pull in a lot of star wars people just from just, the just kind of just, fake names. Just from the, the ensemble, Marvel. the ensemble cast has a potential. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think that the production that's... budget. It feels epic when you watch the trailer. You're like, I don't know what this is, but it seems important. I watched the Lord of the Rings trailer the same day for the mm-hmm. show, the Amazon show. You know oh, what I'm talking is, about? Did that, did that drop? Yeah. Is that what I watched? I'm sure it was. Um. It was a magical show. I think it was Lord of the Rings. I watched it and I did not give a shit at all about what was happening. Oh, and uh, we're, we're talking about the Amazon. The new, yes, the new Amazon show. But they spent like half a billion dollars on it. Mm-hmm. Is, is it connected at all to the Peter Jackson one or is it just a new thing? I think it's connected. I, I couldn't it, tell you for sure, though. To be it honest, it would be kind of uh, it, it'd be kind of weird if it wasn't because those movies are so beloved. But but uh, but that's kind of fantasy, and we're right. and we're talking about computers and aliens and shit. Oh um, yeah, 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 I was just saying, as far as getting people hyped, I think the Dune trailer, if you know nothing about it, does a better job of getting you hyped than okay some of this other stuff coming out. And I, I should say, I'm not 100% if it was that that I saw. It was a fantasy show for Amazon. I thought it was Lord of the Rings, but I can't find a trailer for that. So maybe it was not. Huh. Kind of a mute point anyway, though. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, be that as it may. Um, I, I, think, um, I think you got a good point where I, I, I think the cast will probably be a big draw if, if the material fails to. Um, I, uh, I I was bringing up because it it occurred. Oh, it sorry, it was Wheel of Time. <laughs> well, I'm I saw glad, the trailer for Wheel of Time. I, which I'm, gl- I, I'm yeah. glad that you know. I'm glad that we know that now we can get the paid endorsement from Amazon. <laughs> hey, listen, if they yeah. would, 
That would be a good check. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Phone it, phony up uh, Jeff Bezos. Um, but I, I'm. He likes space. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. I'm just, um, I, I'm bringing up Dune's chances uh, at the box office because it is since the pandemic hit, like, I, I mean, Dune was already like Dune had has to succeed, but now it's just like all these other it's it's on rocky ground um yeah um, you know with whether or not it can recoup its budget and the fact that it's only part one and the part two is not green lit until mm. you know they see the box office receipts for part two so is it th- part one of the first book or part one of like the series i, I, I think it's part one of the first book okay so they're and, really and- gonna milk this thing because there are a few books and and you brought up a mini series earlier that's a whole nother thing like that's a whole like they're doing a a, i i I believe they've already went into production on it i i'd have to look that up for sure okay uh, well i was talking about they weren't sure how to release it so they thought maybe we'll split this movie up into a mini series and release it that way no that's what i heard at one point well, what happened is Denis Villeneuve is one of those filmmakers that's like, absolutely not. My film will only be on in theaters. And, you know, I don't. I have mixed I, feelings I, about that. <laughs> yeah, I under I understand wanting the the cinematic experience, but there there's I, I think between him and like Christopher Nolan and Quentin Tarantino, all filmmakers that I admire, by the way, Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're kind of looking at this a little, uh, the cinema thing through some rose tinted glasses. I'm not saying, you know, cinemas should go away. I would like cinemas to be around forever, but, um, I, I, I do think like they're aspire, they're making an appeal to the theater, the theatrical experience is something that, you know, it, it just can't be, you're not going to truly see the movie mm-hmm. you know, unless, you know, there's somebody next to you, you know, stuffing their face with, you know, uh, cheap <laughs> nachos. Yeah. That's uh, definitely a part of it. <laughs> um, and I, and I get it. I, I, I do, but uh, they, they threw that out there. And then a lot of people were like, why that's a, that's a bad idea because no one's going to see the movie. Less and, people will. Well, what, what, weren't there a few movies that released, in theaters and digital at the same time that did pretty well this past War- year? Warner Brothers released- is like Space really... Jam or whatever. Well, well, yeah, so so Warner Brothers, yeah, back in December, they they announced that, well, they, it, start, it started with Wonder Woman 1984, but they had That's already, announced, they, they announced they were gonna release their entire 2021 slate of films simultaneously in theaters and HBO Max, which was controversial. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. uh, so Wonder Woman, um, you know, Space Jam 2, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, and then Dune, they were gonna make an exception for, and then they, um, they pulled back on it. Uh, and it will be released simultaneously, and I and I think that's an, a concession that Denis Villeneuve is going to have to live with. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's at least it's in theaters at all. It's not just on digital, you know. You yeah, gotta take your the, glass the, half full, Denis. Yeah, the, the thing is though, it's just like you know the pandemic is um, is a real thing, and uh, it's uh, it, people are kind of acting like we're over it, but we're really not. Um, yeah. so, you know, I, I, I do think he probably understands that and, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a business decision, but, um, I'd be happy I'm hy- just to, to get it out at this point. Yeah. 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 I just, like, I just want to see, I just want to see it. I want to, yeah. I want to sit down and experience this thing. Um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty big. Now, have you seen the David Lynch tune? I've only seen part of it. I, I've not okay. sat down and watched the whole thing. Um, and it was really kind of, uh, my memories of it are really fuzzy because I think it was just like on TV playing Probably. and, you know, <laughs> there's guests over or something. I, I, I don't know. And I just, re- all I remember is, huh, weird. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah. I, I saw some stuff in the trailer where I'm like, oh, that I remember that from the original. And it's so crazy how much better it looks. Like they they spar with like that overshield going on. 
it, yeah. it looks like Minecraft in what, the David Lynch one. Yeah. What I, what I, what I love is um, Alejandro uh, Jodorowsky's, actually, he was like, he, yeah, where he's he, in that documentary, he's talking about he was so sad when, you know, <laughs> David Lynch, you know, was making his movie and then he went to go see it and he was, <laughs> very happy because it was he it was he was happy because it was bad yeah i love that and i'm just like jodorowsky's Joe dune is an, is probably the best dune movie that's out <laughs> at this point yeah it's it's documentary, pretty, but... it's pretty solid and it yeah it, it's a it's a pretty cool documentary if you haven't seen it check it out it uh kind of it, it's it uh, honestly how do you how do you pronounce his last name hodorowsky Hodorowski is that yeah okay okay. well however you pronounce it he's insane yeah Holy Mountain that's probably the craziest movies ever I I I think and I'm not just saying that like wow he's he's so so creative I actually think uh, oh he's legitimately insane no I think he's insane (laughs) because doesn't he talk in the documentary stuff he's like like, you know on your wedding night you gotta you gotta you, you gotta rape her oh, because oh. Uh, i'm like oh my what the oh my god yeah, i don't know if all that's aged super uh-huh. well. I, I i don't know <laughs> i i think uh, you know that's a little bit dark but it's it, i just feel like he's like crazy um and that's the only reason why he wanted to he's, i mean i mean you almost have to be a little crazy to do do even try and do do yeah. and, and he um you know, he tried and he put together a whole book, a director's notebook. That, oh, yeah. Um, but I mean, a lot of the stuff in there is like so aspirational. Like, didn't he want like all these crazy bands from the time to be in it? Well, like, yeah, but he got but he got all of it. It was all yeah. set to go. And the only even the music. They, yeah, they got all the bands and everything. They got the actors that and everything. That was what the documentary was about. But yeah, that's the, wild. The, the thing was, uh, once I got to the studio, the studio is like, we love the movie, but um, we have a problem with your director. <laughs> and I don't blame them because at that time, $15, uh, $15, $15 million was a lot of uh, money. And you're oh, yeah. going to put it in the hands of some crazy guy from Argentina but when you look at he did the holy mountain for like eight hundred thousand dollars yeah that's insane but but holy mountain isn't dune i know but i'm saying if you could trust someone to make take this amount of money and make it bigger than you can imagine it's odorowski he's your man and maybe i mean I I try. Not I get where to, the studio is coming from. Though. Well, I, mean, I try. I try not to look at it from like, like. I think it's easy to kind of fall into the trap of like how great, you know, uh, Hodorowski's Dune would have been if it had gotten made. And I I do think there's a good chance, you know, cinematic history might have changed. It might have been like a Star Wars thing. Uh, yeah, I think maybe. I think that's a possibility. But um. I don't know if we can, you know, say definitively, you know, well, sure. you know, it, you know, would it have been good? Would it, you know, I, I don't know. It, there's mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of variables like, with Odorowski. <laughs> well, there's just a lot of variables with filmmaking. Well, that too, sure. And it's just like storyboards and everything. Storyboards are just a, a suggestion. Mm. Yeah. Pretty good uh, suggestion. They, at least have those. Good suggestions. <laughs> Um, and well, I, I want to say if, if we're about to move off Dune too, another reason that we were going to bring it up in conjunction with Alien is obviously the first Alien used a bunch of sets meant for Hodorowski's Dune. It, so, used, it used a bunch of the. Oh, you mean the like the production design? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, though there was so definitely heavy. Well, heavy inspiration also in Prometheus. The um. Mm-hmm. H.R. Giger, um, the the skull on top of the Harkonnen temple was, you know, used on the engineer temple in Prometheus. So it's just right, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It it's it became like such a, uh, it became a well of um, yeah, uh, you know, inspiration. Just, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. People can resources. Uh, <laughs> sci-fi and fantasy have been pulling from for you know God forty years now. 
Darth Vader's helmet. Mm -hmm. Did you? Know, I, I I think we are gonna start kind of wrapping up. But I I did want to mention one more thing. Did you know? I, I didn't know this until recently. Dune was uh, published by a, a a a company that published like car repair manuals. Like what? they don't they don't like like yeah I I forget what they what they're called but they don't. They like do like car repairs and hobby stuff. They don't publish it's an, fiction. It's an old book series, right? So well, yeah, from the '60s. But it was just kind of oh, like listen. you have this, you know, the this uh, magazine uh, publishing company that you know makes uh, writes books about you know how to fix your car and and you know how you know putting together you know. Oh yeah, you're right. Di. <laughs> DIY auto repair manuals, service manuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilton books. Yeah, and then it's just like, yeah, the giant, you know, space drugs and giant sandworms. Sure. <laughs> I, you know, I think that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I think little tidbits like that are, um, you know, are really, really kind of interesting. Add to the the spice of, uh, of things. DIY, more like do it yourself. All right. <laughs> and on that note, all right. Thanks for tuning in. We're oh. gonna call this an episode. Um, Bad like, notes and them. Yeah, yeah. If you like the if you like the show, um, you know, let us know, and then uh, of course like and subscribe if you're not already. Uh, I'm uh, Matt Jojosa. I'm Baker. I have no social media to plug. Um, yeah, only only in my heart, Baker. Yeah, I'll be at Matt's house if you need me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right, Surprise. good night. All right, good night everybody. <laughs> See ya.